Welcome everybody to Circle Back to You with James Hagler today. James is a fight promoter from the famous Hagler family. His dad is Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Welcome, James. How you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Man, when is it time to walk away from the sport of boxing? We've seen people get killed in the ring. We've seen people suffer from brain injuries years later. When is it time to walk away? Well, you know, sometimes when people suffer from these injuries, it's, it's, it's not because it's time to walk away. It's, uh, it could be, you know, the fact that they was hydrated. So some promoters, which I think it should be every, everybody, um, you know, they ask for a, a rehydration test, you know, just to make sure the fighters be hydrated. I think that should be mandatory regardless of, of you know, wherever you're fighting at. But those those sometimes are the situation when somebody's when somebody dies. It's just usually because they're not hydrated. And the reason why you have to be hydrated is because you have um, fluid that protects your brain from bouncing off your skull. So once you drain all this fluid away from your body, you don't have that cushion anymore. So you're in a 10 round fight, 12 round fight, and your head's bouncing off your, your skull all night. And, you know, then these injuries happen. Sometimes these injuries happen like the next day. You know, you, the ref can look at you, look at look you in your eyes, everything. Yeah, he's doing everything's good. He's all right. And then you go home and you turn into a vegetable, you die. So those are um, one of the reasons, you know, why people die. But as far as retiring, I think that, you know, when you should retire is, is when you're not hungry no more, when you're satisfied, you know, when you've done everything you can do in a sport and there's just nothing else for you to accomplish or you just lose the desire. Uh, those um, type of warnings you have to pay attention to because if not, boxing will let you know that it's time to go and it might not be a nice way. You know, you might get beat up well like Bernard Hopkins. I ain't, he didn't get beat up well, but he just, he got knocked outside the ring and, and when he fell, he hit his head on a post and he knew and said to himself that that was it. He just didn't, you know, it just was didn't have the skills anymore. I just, you know, he just saw it, you know, like old, like back in the day, uh, the Viking Kings and all that, they, you know, they call them sodded Kings. And that's what you are when you stay too long in boxing and your time has passed, you become a sodded King. So same thing with Holyfield. Holyfield wanted to box forever, but his performance just wasn't up to par. I mean, you're in there and you're getting, and you're not throwing punches like you usually do. You're holding back a lot and you're just glove shy. And it's, it, you know, you know, it's not there. It's, it's, it's just not there. Boxing is a young man's sport and it always will be. I think that it was the same thing with all combat sports, uh, you know, all physical sports. It doesn't have to be combat, but anything real uh, physical. You know, you, your body will let you know when it's time. It's a young, it's a young man's game. So, you only have a short uh, lifespan when it comes to um, physical sports, you know? So, you know, you just have to do your best at the time that you have that window, you know, once that window starts to shut this, you can't hold it up. You can sit there and try to hold it. Oh, I got it. I got it. That's <laughs> going to come down. You know what I'm saying? And if you're in the way, and if you're in the way, it's going to come down on you. So, you know, just, you have to, you have to stay consistent and, and get the best out of it before it's too late. And that's something that I tell my son. He thinks he's got forever. And I told him, I said, look, if you don't stay consistent with this thing, uh, your age is going to tell you. Every time you got to come back to get back in shape, it's going to tell you. You may you may try to ignore it and all that, but it is there and it's telling you. So the best thing to do is, like they say nowadays, stay in shape so you don't have to get in shape, you know. So you know, don't be too far from being out of shape because when you're older, it just takes that much energy to get back and and sometimes that's enough to have you over peaking or wearing you out i mean we've seen some boxers fight in their 40s like george foreman i mean you know i think he was healthy during that time he doesn't have any brain damage or anything like that now or any other kind of uh mental health issues um but at what age do you recommend that people walk away well it just depends uh george george foreman had he had he had a great career a great career before the first let's say there's one and two George the first George Foreman he was beating up on everybody he didn't get beat up you know what I'm saying so there's nothing it didn't nothing took a toll on him the second time around it took more of a toll on him but he was 40 years old I think uh, as long as 
you stay in shape and you got your faculties about yourself, uh, probably could fight a long time. You know, you just have to, you have to stay consistent. You can't, when you're older, you can't take no rest. You know, you can't take months off. You got, you can't do that when you're at, of age, uh, when you're that age, you got to continue to fight, continue to fight. Cause you're going to rest. You'll get rusty real quick. So you want to continue to fight, continue to fight. And George came out when he was 40. He, he was hungry for it. He, um, it was a different era. Because nowadays you're just not fighting anybody. You you, you know you can select your opponents and, and and get the right fights for yourself until you have to fight that fight. You know, so what uh, George did was remarkable at at his age, and you know you got to get it hats off to him and any guys that fight past their forties. I think you know at one point in time back in the day, if you was thirty when you hit, I remember back in my dad's day when you were like thirty. Um, you start hitting 30s, you just consider old, 30, 31, 32. But now fighters are more athletically inclined. That's the way they train. So before it was just all boxing, all boxing, all boxing. Now they train, they cross train, they do all kinds of things. They're a complete athlete. So therefore, you got a little more longevity. And the way everybody's fighting, you're not, you're not, you're not, they're not fighting all the tough first, all the tough fights early. That, you know, they're, they're picking their fights and they're lasting longer. So this, you know, this moved the age limit up. So now the age limit is, if you start hitting 41, 42, you know, usually I say the cutoff time in, in a fight's career, I give him 45, 46 the latest, just depending on how he's look, how he's looking. You know, as long as he can throw punches and protect himself and, and whoop ass, then he can still fight. That's basically, <laughs> boxing, as long as you can whoop ass, you can fight. If you whooping ass at 50 years old, you can fight. Right, you're knocking, out, you're knocking out the you're knocking out the young guys at sixty years old. You can fight; they'll let you fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you start getting beat up. Okay, we, we had enough. Come on, they'll pull you out. You know what I mean? But as long as you whooping ass, they you you can still fight. You know, and and I'm and I'm I can't wait to see that person that fights at sixty years old and is still kicking ass, man. That's gonna be something, but it can be done. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it from the master, James Hagler. <laughs> we will see you again at the same time next week. Bye-bye.